so we can electrify the, the whole thing. We make sure we check them off twice a day, make sure we see them all, make sure their health is good. A couple of hours after she is born, a caribou calf can run. However, today in the wild Columbia Mountains, four out of every five calves born will not make it to the following spring. They are vulnerable to many compounding threats. Although this animal lives where few animals can survive, they are incredibly sensitive to human use on the landscape. These caribou spend winters high in the deep snow mountains, where travel is difficult for predators. Standing on meters of snow, they access lichens that hang from stands of old trees. Since 1995, there has been a sharp population decline, from 2,500 animals to 1,350 today. First Nation, federal and provincial governments are working to ensure legislation and action plans protect large tracts of old growth forests, which act as critical habitat to this endangered species at risk. A community of diverse stakeholders has gone from pointing fingers to joining hands. Uh, this is our um, caribou fence. We have it electrified to protect it from predators that may come through. Knowing that calf survival is key, the group set out to protect calves from predators through their most vulnerable period. They built a 9.3 hectare maternity pen within the natural habitat of this herd. Every March, a team of specialists capture between 10 and 18 female caribou, most of whom are pregnant. The group chose the larger and more stable North Colombian herd with 150 animals. Biologists and vets assess cow health and fit each animal with a GPS collar before releasing them into the pen. Maternity penning is meant to strengthen the herd and prevent their extinction while impacted forests recover. We may miss our chance if we don't act now. These are our feeders that we feed the caribou, the pellets and the lichen in. And we put the roos over top of it because we get so much snow and rain here. They just sustain the animals while we have them in the pen and give them good nourishment. So when we turn them out, they're in good shape. Hundreds of volunteers collect lichen to help caribou transition from lichen to pellets. This is the color chart of all the caribou that are in here. Shepherds live on site 24 hours a day and a vet stays throughout the birthing window. We set out game cameras on the approaches to the pen to make sure that if there are any predators coming in the area, we're aware of it. The caribou are released in early July when most of the calves are at least one month old. GPS collars indicate the location of caribou, and they also send a mortality signal, which biologists investigate immediately by air or on foot. In late winter, an aerial census provides estimates on herd population and calf survival. Heading into the final year of the project, the results show that the team is very near reaching its goal of doubling calf survival. After three years, seven caribou calves are on the landscape now that wouldn't be if it were not for the maternity pen. From First Nations, federal and provincial governments, to tourism, recreational users, environmental groups and natural resource industries, diverse interests have been set aside to concentrate on what's best for this fragile species. All of the world's caribou and reindeer belong to a single species, but less than 1,350 caribou on the planet call the deep snow mountains their home. The main take home is that maternal penning alone won't recover caribou. You need to protect and restore the habitat and you need to manage the predator prey system. So penning is one important component, but a relatively smaller component from the overall big picture. The fate of this animal is in our hands. What will it be, heads or tails? Share this video, become part of the village that is working to recover deep snow mountain caribou. Visit rcrw.ca to find out more about maternity penning. Visit provincial and federal government sites to find out more about status, legislation and action plans. <laughs>